All right, great. So now that we know what an NFT is, let's begin to work on the full code. And remember, and again, for those of you who want to follow along, you can come on down to the course and find all the Git code associated with this lesson. And like I said earlier, we're going to be deploying our first NFTs and learning some incredibly advanced pieces of Solidity as well and some low level functionality. So let's begin. So same as always, MKDIR, Foundry, NFT, F23. Let's open that up. Code, Foundry, NFT, F23, or file, open, folder. Boom, blank, VS Code. Here we go. Pull that terminal back up. Let's close the Explorer. There. Forge, init. Brand new blank folder. All right, cool. Boom, boom, boom. Let's remove these three. Goodbye. Goodbye counter. Dot git ignore. Okay, dot emb is in here. We're going to add broadcast as well. Okay, great. Now let's start to create this NFT. Like we said in the video, it's really just a token standard, just like the ERC20, the non fungible token standard. So, same as the ERC20, what we could do is we could walk through all of these functions and implement them ourselves. Or we could just use once again, our favorite package, open Zeppelin. So if we go to the open Zeppelin contracts, we go to contracts, we scroll down, they have a token folder with an ERC 721 in here, and an ERC 721.sol with most of the functionality that we need already in here. So let's go ahead and use this instead of having to rewrite all these functions out. So in here, we're going to go ahead, SRC, new file, basic nft.sol, and you know the drill, SPDX, license, identifier MIT, pragma, solidity, 0 0.8.18, contract, basic NFT, like this. So let's go ahead, let's install this open Zeppelin contracts. So if we scroll up, we're going to install open Zeppelin slash open Zeppelin contracts, forge install, open Zeppelin slash open Zeppelin contracts, dash dash no dash commit. Great. And now that we have that, we're going to go to our foundry.toml. We'll do a little bit of remappings equals at open Zeppelin slash slash contracts equals lib slash open Zeppelin. And I'm going to do a toggle word wrap open Zeppelin dash contracts slash contracts like that. Okay, cool. So now we should be able to use open Zeppelin in here. So we'll do a little import at oh even auto populates a little bit open Zeppelin slash contracts slash token slash ERC 721 slash ERC 721 dot soul that and then we can say our basic NFT is ERC 721. We will get a little red underscore here saying no arguments passed to the base constructor. If we command or control to click into this or just go to this folder up here, we scroll down to the constructor, we can see it takes a name and a symbol. So because of that, we're gonna have to copy this, create a constructor, boom. And then also use the constructor of the NFT base class, copy, or actually, we're gonna call this dog. Instead of base NFT, this is gonna be doggy, boom, like this. Okay, cool. So what do we need to do now that we have this? Are we done? Well, no, not quite, right? We didn't define what this is actually going to look like. We didn't define how to get this. There's a there's a bunch of things we didn't quite finish doing yet. So let's add our own token counter just so that it's very easy for us to tell which number is which. And if we go back to this ERC20 token standard, there is a balance of function. But remember, these are unique. Even if I have 10 NFTs of a collection, those 10 NFTs aren't necessarily all worth the same. So there's this owner of function where we pass a token ID. When we launch this doggy ERC20 contract, it actually represents an entire collection of doggies. And each doggy in this doggy basic NFT collection is going to get its own unique token ID. So unique NFT is a combination of the contract address, which basically represents the collection, and then the token ID. So for us, we're just going to have a token counter represent each token ID, right? So we're going to say a UN256 private 
S underscore token counter opens up one also has a built in plugin for this, but we're just going to roll with our own. And right when we deploy this contract, we're going to set S token counter to zero, right? Because this is going to be a storage variable and we're going to update it a lot. Every time we mint a new dog, we're going to update this token counter, right? Okay, cool. So now let's learn how to actually mint ourselves one of these puppies. So we're going to say function mint NFT public like this, and this is going to be the function we're going to do to do so. Now, if we scroll down to the bottom of the ERC EIP 721 section, we will come across one of the most important functions in the EIP 721, which is this token URI. What's crazy about this is this was originally considered an optional parameter. So a token URI stands for a token universal resource indicator, excuse me, uniform resource identifier. And a URL on the other hand, like what we see up here in the browser is a uniform resource locator. We can kind of see the difference between the two right here. A URL provides the location of the resource. A URI identifies the resource by name and the specified location or URL. You can basically think of this as a URL, but the difference between a URI and a URL are slightly different. But this token URI actually is an endpoint, some type of API call hosted somewhere that's going to return the metadata for the NFT. And it's going to return an object that looks just like this. It'll have a title, a type, some properties, etc. And it's this that defines what the NFT looks like. So for us to create this NFT, each token counter, each token URI is going to need to have this URI that points to what it should look like. Okay, and if that's a little bit confusing, don't worry, we're going to explain it as always. So why don't we do this first, we're actually going to skip this mint function and just go right down to function token URI. So the ERC 721 has a in open Zeppelin has a token URI function that looks like this. So we're going to override this since it's got the virtual keyword so we can override this and write our own token URI function. Whenever you want to look at what an NFT looks like, it's this function that they're calling. So we can actually see any, if we go to OpenSea, you can really go to any popular NFT. I'll go to Pudgy Penguins, for example. We'll select any Pudgy Penguin. I'm just gonna pick the one on top. We can go down, we can go to the details, contract address for this. We can see the token ID is 1378. We'll go to Pudgy Penguins, we'll go to the contract, we'll go to read contract, connect to Web3, sure, sure. Scroll all the way down to token URI and I'll put in that token URI, I'll hit query. And then we get a response back that shows an endpoint that should return that metadata. And if we copy that, we paste into the browser, we indeed see we get some raw data that looks like this with all the traits of this NFT. And then we also get this image section which has this PNG, where if we put that in the browser, we do indeed get what the image, what the penguin actually looks like. So this is hosted on IPFS. We'll learn what IPFS is in a little bit. Okay, great. So let's do this token URI bit. So the token URI needs to have a uint256 token ID passed, and this is gonna be a public view. We need to override the base class implementation, and it needs to return a string memory. Right, because it needs to return, if we go back to the Pudgy Penguin, it needs to return a string like this. Now, in V1, in, with our basic NFT, we're also going to use IPFS. And then in our second NFT, it's actually going to return a URI that's completely hosted on chain. Crazy, I know, stay tuned. String memory. Okay, so what we could do in here, if we wanted to just have all of these be exactly the same, we could say like return, and I could even copy this if I wanted to return and just boom, paste it in like that. And now all of our dogs are going to have this pudgy penguin NFT token URI, right? We don't want that. We want to have our own metadata. So for your convenience, I already have a couple of images that we can borrow. So if you come to the GitHub repo associated with this lesson, go down to images, we go to dog NFT, you can feel free to pick the puppy that you want to use for your project, the pug, the Shiba Inu, maybe the St. Bernard. They're all so adorable, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna pick the pug because that's the first one. 
I'm going to save this image. I saved it to my downloads. I'm going to come to my files in here. I'm going to create a new folder, IMG, which stands for image. And I'm going to drag and drop this image in here or just paste it in there, whatever you want to do. Now that we have this image in here, we can use this. We can use this to get our token URI for our basic NFT. And there's a couple of different ways that we can use it. But first, we need to understand what IPFS is and how it actually works. 